from Mahalo.com. I've taught math for a long time, including teaching teachers who teach math. Now today we're going to cover how to calculate the surface area of a cube. A cube is a box, and what makes it a cube is that each face of the box is a perfect square. That means that every edge of the cube is the same length, and we'll call that length S. Now the area of one of the faces is just the area of a square which is s times s, or s squared. To find the surface area, we have to find the area of all of the faces and add them all up. Now a box, or a cube, has six faces, front and back, top and bottom, and left and right. So the surface area is just equal to 6s squared. s squared is the area of one face, and there are six faces. Now don't forget, if your cube is measured in inches, centimeters, feet, whatever, your surface area will be measured in square inches, square centimeters, or square feet. And that's it. That's how you calculate the surface area of a cube. Thanks for learning with me today. If you'd like to learn more about this topic or anything related to math, please click on the links or send us an email. Let's see if we can figure out the surface area of this cereal box. And there's a couple of ways to tackle it. The first way is, well, let's figure out the surface area of the sides that we can see, and then think about what the surface area of the sides that we can't see are, and how they might relate, and then add them all together. So let's do that. So the front of the box is 20 centimeters tall and 10 centimeters wide. It's a rectangle, so to figure out its area, we can just multiply 20 centimeters times 10 centimeters, and that's going to give us 200 centimeters. 200 centimeters, or 200 square centimeters, I should say. 200 square centimeters, that's the area of the front. And let me write it over here as well, 200. Now, we also know there's another side that has the exact same area as the front of the box, and that's the back of the box. And so let's write another 200 square centimeters for the back of the box. Now let's figure out the area of the top of the box. The top of the box is, we see it's three, the box is three centimeters deep. So this right over here is three centimeters. Three, it's three centimeters deep. And it's 10 centimeters wide. We see that the box is 10 centimeters wide. So the top of the box is going to be 3 centimeters times 10 centimeters, which is 30 square centimeters of area. So that's the top of the box, 30 square centimeters. Well, the bottom of the box is going to have the exact same area. We just can't see it right now. So that's going to be another 30. And we have two more sides, because this box has six sides. We have this side panel that is 20 centimeters tall. We see that the height of the box is 20 centimeters. And 3 centimeters deep. So 3 times 3 times 20, 3 times, let me write that a little bit neater, 3 times 20, that's 20 centimeters right there, it, 3 centimeters times 20 centimeters is going to give us 60 square centimeters. 60 square centimeters. Now that's this side panel, but there's another side panel that has the exact same area that's on the other side of the box. So it's 60 centimeters squared or squared centimeters for this side, and then another 60 for the corresponding side opposite to it that we can't see. And now we can just add up all of these together. And so we get 0, let's see, this is going to be, let's see, carry the 1 or regroup the 1. It's a 100, and then we have 500. So we get 580 square centimeters is the surface area of this box. To find the surface area of a rectangular prism, all we are really doing is finding the area of all six rectangles or surfaces of that rectangular prism and adding those areas together. We are going to start out by identifying the dimensions of the front surface of this rectangular prism. The dimensions of this front surface are 8 by 12. So we are going to write 8 times 12 inside a set of parentheses. Because the front surface is 8 by 12, the back surface will be the same dimensions. So we are going to write a number 2 on the outside of parentheses. This simply means we have two rectangles that have the dimensions of 8 by 12. Next, let's identify the dimensions of the right surface. The dimensions are 4 by 12. And because the left surface is identical to the right surface, once again, we are going to write a 2 on the outside of our set of parentheses. And the top surface has dimensions of 4 by 8. Because the top surface is 4 by 8, 
the bottom surface is also 4 by 8. So once again, we are going to write a 2 on the outside of our parentheses. Now, we are going to simplify what we have written until we have one answer left, which will be the surface area of our rectangular prism. When multiplying 8 by 12, we get 96. So the area of the front rectangle is 96 square inches. And because the back surface is identical in area, we have two rectangles with an area of 96. When we multiply 4 times 12, we get an area of 48. So the right surface has an area of 48, as does the left surface as well. And for the top surface and the bottom surface, each one of those have an area of 32 square units. After combining the areas of the front and the back surfaces, we get a total area of 192 square units. Combining the area of the left and the right surfaces, we get a total area of 96 square units. And when combining the area of the top and the bottom surfaces, we get a total area of 64 square units. When adding all three of those totals together, we get a total surface area of 352 square inches. So it would take 352 square inches to completely cover all six surfaces of this particular rectangular prism.